Welcome back everybody to Dr. Sellers Educate. We're happy that you're here and hopefully you are carving out some time from your schedule every single week to tune in and watch our updated episodes. We release a new episode every single week and we usually keep it to five to 10 minutes, but sometimes there is just so much to share that we end up running a little long. Um, a couple of questions have come up the last week and we wanna be able to answer those for you all right now. So first question was, can you be successful on the exam and only watch our YouTube episodes? The short answer to that is no. We believe that you do need additional resources to help you close your knowledge gaps. Having Billings and Halstead is that foundation. If you're taking the CNE, the CNE novice or CNE CL, you want to have teaching and nursing sixth edition as your foundation to review content. And that's what we do right here on our snapshots as well as in all of our programs. Okay, so we use teaching and nursing as our foundation. And then we build on that based on the exam. If you are taking the CNE exam, we highly recommend Dr. Caputi's second edition CNE review book. And if you're taking, and that's for CNE and CNE novice. Okay, so when we mention CNE, we mean the novice and the traditional, what I call the traditional exam, um, the academic CNE. And then if you're taking the CNE CL, we recommend the CNE CL review book by Dr. Teresa Schellenberger. Okay, so those are the foundational resources that you need and then the ones that you're building on top of those to ensure you're closing your knowledge gaps. So that's step one. We love you tuning in here, but you're gonna need to do more content review than just showing up here um, every week, hopefully. Um, to review and to hear about content that we are sharing. Go ahead and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. That way you will be notified as soon as our new snapshot is released. Second, we are, um, we are responding to many of you that have asked and we are going to offer a free webinar on this Friday, which is coming up as the end of the semester for many of you all. Okay, so that's December 9th. Friday at 12 noon Eastern. We're going to spend about 30 minutes or so reviewing content that's going to help you close out strong for 2022 and plan for 2023. All right. So we're focusing on pathway to success. Okay. C and E in 2023. That is what we're going to be focusing on. So we're going to talk about three key resources, which we've already talked about too, that you will need to ensure that you're closing your knowledge gaps. And then we're going to share some tips and tricks and just feedback from other nurse educators that have been successful on these exams. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and jump into our content for this snapshot, continuing to look at Boyer Scholarship Model. We're gonna be focusing specifically on the scholarship of discovery. All right, and simply put, Boyer talked about the scholarship of discovery being about um, demonstrating palpable excitement in the life of the institution. Doesn't that sound so exciting? Far more exciting than the traditional scholarship that some of us uh, engage in as it relates to research. Um, so there are two resources that we're using for our snapshot in this in this episode. So we're starting on page eight in Billings and Halstead, looking at the second column. Um, the scholarship of discovery is where it starts, right? It's the foundation for all three other um, dimensions of scholarship. So how appropriate that we would circle back to, to discovery of scholarship. All right, so looking also at chapter seven in Dr. Caputi's review, review book, page 127 is where we start. Now, if you're taking the CNECL, this is important for you to know as well, okay? So if you don't have Dr. Caputi's book, I don't want you to get stressed out about it. I just want you to focus on using Billings and Halstead, all right, if you are taking the CNECL. So let's talk about the content as it relates to this important dimension of scholarship. Scholarship of discovery is the traditional definition of original research. Many of us have completed a doctorate or at a minimum an MSN. And we know that there had to be study of research in our curriculum plan of study. Those are the same concepts that we're talking about here when we, when we mention the scholarship of discovery, right? This is original research where we are developing research um, for, for new research to help us focus on an area perhaps that we're interested in learning more about. And oftentimes our research question comes from the fact that there's really no evidence out there in the literature, right? That's gonna answer our research question. We're not gonna get too deep into concepts related to research 
because those are not going to be the focal areas for you as you close your knowledge gaps. When you take a look at the exam, the detailed exam blueprint, you're going to see about five to six different subcompetency areas that you'll want to hone in on as it relates to board of scholarship model. Okay. Remember that you don't want to take it for granted because every single question counts right towards that passing score. We know you're going to have 150 questions. We know you're going to have three hours to take those, the, to answer those questions. And we want you to be able to be very confident in your response and to spend time investing and in closing your knowledge gap. So you can also be competent and ultimately successful when you exit the exam, all right? Discovery is associated with epistemologies, most commonly known as research. So what is epistemology? Well, it's a fancy word that really describes an introduction to the word and to a concept, okay? So when we talk about epistemology, it is really the theory of knowledge. So here are a couple of questions that I want you to think about when you hear the word epistemology. It is concerned with the mind's relation to reality. So first question, what is it for this relation to be one of knowledge? Do we know things? So do we, have we comprehended the content related to this specific concept? And if we do, how and when do we know these things or these concepts or terms that we are talking about? Okay, so that's what we mean by epistemology. It is considered, again, as the foundation of the other three aspects of scholarship. So this is where it starts, right? It starts with this new, lot of, new knowledge that we're generating in order to use it when we apply what the evidence tells us based on our research. Okay, so let me give you one example. My research focus in, P in my PhD program was really around the influence of transformational leadership practices on patient outcomes, specifically looking at um, hospital-acquired pressure ulcers and fall rates. So my theory was that I felt like there was a strong relationship between a leader's ability to be transformational, to ensure that they are visible, that they are practicing purposeful rounding, that they are being present with their staff, that they are removing those barriers to deliver safe patient care, okay? Whether that's staffing, resources, whatever that's gonna look like, um, and even equipment um, can be a barrier to providing quality care, all right? So that was my theory. And so specifically what has happened as a result of the research that I did, now there are specific behaviors associated with the transformational leader, such as having scheduled time on their calendar to round on their faculty, having a committee, specifically a products committee, where we can talk about what tools are needed by the staff to ensure that there's a decrease in hospital acquired pressure ulcers, that there's a decrease in the fall risk. All right, and then the other element is really related to integration into the discipline. So thinking about poster presentations, taking it to the next level, where we truly are looking at those key steps in the process to coach a leader, um, to select that leader, even more importantly, to ensure that there is a decrease in our happy rates and decrease in our incidence of falls. All right, as well as for teaching, because obviously, we will be able to cite the research that, um, or I cite the research actually and other colleagues as well, as it relates to the findings from the research study. Um, Evidence-based practice, that's what this is all about. When we talk about clinical application, we want to ensure that our nursing students are indeed pulling research or pulling those evidence-based practices into their everyday decision-making about how they are going to care for their patients. I right, so as always, we have to um, look at a practice test question. So our last slide really is related to the scientific methods. We want to make sure we're using frameworks, right? We want to use those evidence-based frameworks to develop our research study. So as an example, when I was looking at different frameworks, I knew that I wanted to use um, a leadership tool. So that was the first step, figuring out which tool I was going to use. I'm making sure that it was indeed evidence-based. And then looking at the framework that I wanted to use, I decided to use the SPO framework or the structure process outcomes to ensure that I would be able to incorporate all of those key elements in the patient care process that I wanted to explore, okay? And then last is funding resources, all right? So stay with me. 
Um, NLN has supported research for more than two decades. They continue to do quite a bit of work of making sure that they are supporting the research studies that are out there um, and very needed in nursing education and then other areas as well. Um, and then National Institutes of Nursing Research and then NIH, of course, are just three funding resources that help us in nursing education um, and overall nursing practice to ensure that we are engaging in research. All right, so last bit of content, we always have to end with a practice question, right? That's gonna help us hopefully apply some of the concepts that we have talked about. Um, that's what the CE exams are all about. It's our ability to really take the information from all eight competencies for the CE and CE novice or six competencies from the CE CL and be able to extract content related to those CE competencies, either from our everyday work that we are doing as nurse educators or either from the literature, the content that we're reviewing as part of our seven week study plan or 60 day to C and E study plan. All right, so here are the three options. A, utilizing a variety of high impact teaching strategies to engage students in the classroom. B, conducting poster presentation on the impact of utilizing technology to enhance the learning experience. C, conducting a research study on nursing retention strategies. Or D, pulling together facts to generate new insights about antimicrobial agents for central lines. If you want to pause here and come back when you have um, chosen your answer, that's fine. If you chose C, you are correct. All right. So this one was pretty basic, but the goal is that you're able to really process and celebrate, yes, that you chose the correct answer. You also want to process why the other three choices are not correct. All right. So I, I think it's pretty self-explanatory, but if you have any questions about any of the content that we have covered here, as always, you can reach out to us at drsellerseducate.com. That's where you're going to find all of our resources. Or you can email us, and that's going to be info at drsellerseducate.com. These are the two primary resources looking at Chapter 7 in Dr. Caputi's re review book in Chapter 1, pages 8 through 10 in Billings and Halstead. All right, that is going to wrap up our time together for this snapshot. And we hope to see you on Friday. Okay, again, I'm going to go ahead and put up, I'm going to stop sharing for one second. I'm going to go ahead and um, share with you the website. So this is, again, our Pathways to Success, um, looking at what you're going to be focusing on to become CNE in 2023. Okay, whether that's CNE novice or the CNE academic or CNE clinical. All right, so we're gonna be talking about specifically, what are those next steps for you to ensure that you are closing your knowledge gaps and that you are ready to go whenever 2023 comes around, okay? So again, that's gonna be in the notes, the description, depending on if you're watching us on YouTube or if you're listen, listening to us on Spotify, you will um, see that information for you to register. So I hope to see you on Friday and I hope you all have a great weekend. Until next time, bye-bye everybody.